All right, all right. Beanie Talks with Friends, episode 71. We're here on 91 Memorial Road at the Rise Up Group Building. This is exciting. Yeah. I love this place. It's so spacious. It's beautiful. There's Lots of space here. Beautiful artwork behind me. I'm just really excited to be here. I, we have a wonderful guest, Matt Conway. What's up, Matt? Not too much. Excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. This is Feeney Talks with Friends. My name is Eric Feeney, founder and president of Friends of Feeney. It's a nonprofit, and our mission is to help children and families that need heartbreak or tragedy. And I use this podcast, Feeney Talks with Friends, and I talk to wonderful people that are doing great things in the community. And Matt, you do wonderful things in the community. Thank you. you make our community our community a beautiful place appreciate that <laughs> yeah so we'll talk more about the rise up group quick review last episode episode 70 alex mcdonald from luna pizza mm. what's your take on luna pizza you ever had I, it? I love it i used to go there with my uh, grandma actually i think it was the plainville one i don't know if it's the same owners but over in plainville new britain i'm pretty sure there was a, a luna pizza over there that uh I used to go to with my grandma, yeah. Well, I got a surprise for you, so just hold on tight. <laughs> Luna Pizza, wonderful podcast. Go back and check it out. I did a pizza review. I cooked a pizza. Oof. It was hands-on. It was great. Alex was a wonderful guest. He's an awesome person. Um, but let's talk about Matt Conway, mm. executive director. <laughs> to be found at matt.conway at theriseupgroup.org. Can you tell us about the Rise Up Group? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Rise Up was founded in 2012 as a youth development and mentoring program before we even started any of the the public artwork. Um, And what we did is we worked with youth in the Hartford community to provide them mentoring, tutoring, and extracurricular community service activities to do out, out in the community. You know, very similar to why you founded, you know, your nonprofit. We we were working with a, a school in Hartford, and we just realized how big of a gap there is between suburbs and inner cities and the resources that are provided to kids, especially once your, you know, income drops a certain level. Um, you know, people just kind of sem- seem to forget about those kids. And so... Uh, myself and a, a group of guys and girls from UConn that I went to college with, um, we started Rise Up in 2012. And then uh, we slowly progressed and, and grew, and we're working with a core group of kids for a couple of years. Um, and then those students wanted to do a mural project. And that mural project is what has really led us to our, our growth in the community. Um, and we're now doing mural projects across the state from Stanford up to Putnam. <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. amazing. No, I love hearing that. Um, they say arts, you know, could help you with your math, could get you interested in other subjects and just keep you engaged. And um, it's, I think it's amazing. And I love all of your wonderful, beautiful murals around town. Uh, we'll talk about a few. I mean, the library, we're here yeah. on Memorial <laughs> Road. So the library is like one block over. Yeah. Uh, beautiful murals. You want to yep. talk about the library murals? Yeah, sure. So uh, we actually have one, two, three, four murals in the Blueback Square area. Um, one is on the library. We have two over on Spaces on Raymond Ave. Okay. Um, and then we also have one right in front of Cheesecake Factory. Uh, it's an Instagrammable one, a swing you could like stand in front of and, and take good pictures. What's the one in front of Cheesecake? Uh, is it the Angel Wings? No, so that that actually got replaced recently with uh, huge flowers and a swing. So you can pretend like you're swinging um, uh, in the picture. And that's yours? Yeah, yeah. And it's the same spot where the wings are. Same work. spot as the wings, yep. Gotcha. Yep. And who's on the library? Just yeah, over. so there's a whole bunch of different people on the library. So... Uh, the library project is actually what kicked off kind of our work in West Hartford and working with the community. Um, the library mural is part of our MLK 39 racial equity mural tour. So we worked uh, closely with concerned parents of color, West Hartford. Uh, we worked with Wasco. We worked with the library, the, the town, and, you know, over, you know, 100 community members that either donated or, or filled out the survey to show what should be in the mural. And then we had another, you know, probably 50 community members come out and actually help paint the mural one day, too, uh-huh. in, including Kingswood Oxford students. 
Um, so that mural represents, uh, you know, the, the racial equity in West Hartford and, and the history telling a story from Bristow, who was a, a freed slave here in West Hartford, leading all the way up to Martin Luther King, Ella Baker, Dr. Bernard Lafayette, you know, your, your history makers in the 50s and 60s in, in racial equity. And then around the front of the library, you have um, Judy Casperson, Tammy Exum, and Gertrude Banks, who were all uh, pivotal women in West Hartford who did the, the first um, for yeah. black women, whether it was the first state representative for a city councilwoman or the first uh, black woman to graduate from Hall High School. Um, okay. So really, you know, telling that story from freedom to excellence is wow. uh, what it really represents. That's amazing. Um, I did not know the third person in the front. Yeah. Tammy Exum, future guest. Yeah. Um, Judy Casperson, wonderful person. I've yep. talked with her many times. Um, and who was the third one again? Gertrude Banks. Gertrude Banks. Yeah. So, is she still with us? She uh, still? Nope, she's passed away. Um, but what, what's really interesting through, you know, what these projects do is they uncover this history and they educate people in the yeah. community who may not know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and what's interesting is the Hartford Public Library has a, uh, a small kind of installation um, honoring her history and her impact on this area. And we've been talking now about bringing a, a similar installation for the Juneteenth celebration in June to the library as well to, to honor her and tell her story more. That's so cool. And um, that, no, I, there has to be, there had to be helpers because that is the entire side of the library. Yeah. For like <laughs> 10 people to do that would have taken a week. So you said 50 or more? So for, to be honest, like the artist, Corey Payne, um, who's one of the artists that's done a bunch of work with us, he's incredibly talented and inc incredibly fast, world-class artist, lives literally around the corner from here. Uh, yep. He probably did it in eight days, um, oh, wow. mostly by himself. The, the day the volunteers were there, we were putting up kind of the base coats. Yeah, the, the blue, I would the say. The blue, yeah. yeah. And then um, on the bottom, there's jars that say freedom. And the jars are representative of the jars at the, uh, I think it's the Black History Museum. I forget the exact museum that's down in Alabama. Um, that's, you know, it's supposed to represent, you know, the, the land that the slaves are on and they put them up in, in jars. Uh, and so now we have that painted in our mural that says freedom. Oh, so the community cool. helped to paint that piece because it was, you know, lower down. And I think that's great. No, it's beautiful. It really spices up and uh, it pops when you walk by. You got the Noah Webster statue, and then boom, like yeah. beautiful painting. I love it. Corey Payne's a cool guy. Yeah. He uh, never interacted. I saw him at Jerry's Artorama. Mm -hmm. He's there every day, oh, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> um, he knows my buddy Dylan Geisler, and Dylan Geisler claimed the fame. He did it, the REI, inside of REI. Okay. He did uh, like an outdoor themed oh, mural. Cool. REI paid him. Mm -hmm. and. There's like a kayaker, there's a mountain biker, a hiker. Yeah. And Dylan Geisler, my buddy, is a PE teacher, is like, hey, look closely on the mountain biker. That's me. <laughs> Corey Payne did that for me. And I'm like, I don't That's know. Awesome. But it does look like him, Dylan. I uh, just saw him the other day at Gastro Park. Shout out to my buddy Geisler. He's a wonderful PE teacher, and he's in a mural awesome. made by Corey Payne. Beautiful. Corey Payne, great guy. Hopefully he'll be a guest someday. You yeah. think you get him on? I, yeah, I could probably get him on. He nice. actually literally called me as I was driving here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so we got some sponsors. Um, Weeha Brewing and Roasting, Gastro Park, The Fix IV, Donut Crazy, Keating Agency Insurance, and the West Hartford Lock. Brook Golf Law Group. Luna Pizza. And direct, this wouldn't be possible without direct line meeting. My man Kyle stepping in. I like this guy. We're going to keep him around. This would not be possible without direct line media. D Dave and Kyle from direct line media, thank you for podcasting. We're on episode 71. Did we talk about that yet? 71. Did I stress that? 71 episodes. How's it feel to be number 71? I, I feel like I'm walking on greatness. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, back to our sponsors, West Hartford Lock. What are three keys? See what I did there, West Hartford Lock. Three keys that make you a wonderful executive director for the Rise Up group. What are three keys that, you know? Uh, listening is yes. probably number one. Um, empathy nice. um, and collaboration. I think those three are, are the main 
you know, ingredients to success as a leader. I mean, there's a lot more, but... Uh, yeah, listening, was, empathy, and... Collaboration. Collaboration. Those are yeah. great. You hit it on the head, and that was fast, too. <laughs> you fired those off. Collaboration. Yeah, to be a good listener. I think that's phenomenal, and empathy, walking in, uh, in other people's shoes. Yeah. That's great. Um, so that's three keys. Um, and also, oh, you have some, a wonderful website. Who does your website? Uh, so myself and one of our uh, designers uh, did it um, together, Studio 162 out of Stanford, Lauren Clayton. She's also one of our muralists uh, as well. Um, so really talented woman. Um, but yeah, we kind of tag teamed it together. I, I like getting my hands dirty uh, in every kind of project. So I'm yeah. really hands on. I like to learn, you know, even though if I'm not going to be the expert on it, I, I need to know how things work and stuff. Um, so we both kind of rolled our sleeves up and, and worked on it together. And are you a painter? I am not. I will help with the priming. I'll help, you know, with the community paint days when I bring my daughter out. You know, I'll, I'll help in, in that fashion. Uh, but I really leave that up to, to the experts. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, it's amazing the, the talent that we have here in Connecticut, especially, you know, central Connecticut where we are, world class. You know, there, there are cities across the country that you know, are exporting in the talent that we have down the street. And yeah, uh, I it's, think it's really amazing. exciting to, to be a part of it. We got an amazing website, so I mixed it into the index card game. You'll, <laughs> you'll see something and you'll talk about it. All right. The Parkville Paints Project, uh, yeah. the PPP. PPP Project. So this is a, uh, a mural project that's meant to paint 50,000 square feet of public art in the Parkville neighborhood of Hartford. Uh, it's where our studio space is. It is, uh, you know, really growing into like a little artist hub, um, and we want to be part of that. Uh, so we're currently raising money for that project as well. There's a, a GoFundMe out there. Um, so yeah, we're looking to create 50,000 square feet of murals in the Parkville neighborhood. We're about 10,000 square feet there. So. In, and you need 40,000 to go. See yeah. what I did there? Yeah. Third grade math. <laughs> Do you know Carlos Muta? Carlos is our major partner on the project. Yeah, so we're painting all of these murals on his buildings, uh, yeah. or most of the murals on his buildings. There's some other folks where... Podcast guests next week at Parkville Market. Beautiful. Come by next Monday. Beautiful. So we have multiple murals at Parkville Market. All right. So Let me know which ones and we'll... All, all of them. <laughs> Any mural that's there, <laughs> we uh, organize. Every single one of them. <laughs> us. Very yeah. cool. Um, when I don't picture one right now. Can you point one out? Because I don't have one. Yeah, like, so what they're do all see? outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so when you're walking up from Park Street... Yep. There is a big one on the ramp, and then the, there's another one on a big building that's yep. inside the little courtyard area. Okay. Uh, it's huge butterfly wings. Uh, so yep, when yep. I talk about collaboration, a lot of our projects are done in partnership with another nonprofit. So um, that project, while Carlos gave us the wall to do it, it's actually um, in partnership with an organization called Wings for Peace. Oh, wow. uh, so they're actually doing you know, small projects, like a kid could paint wings or write peace on a rock and like put it out and it'll be part of the, the project. But we want to do something a little bit more and bigger. Um, and there was a, a shooting a, a couple days before we revealed this mural as well, right in, in the neighborhood. Um, so we really wanted to bring, you know, peace. And so it's uh, meant to reduce, you know, gun violence, bring awareness to, to gun violence in a, a beautiful, peaceful way. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So our motto, be a good friend. Pick up trash that's not yours. Give a compliment. Hold the door for someone. Be charitable. How is Carlos Muta a good friend? So Carlos, by you know giving us his uh, his wall space, has been a, a great partner. Um, he's also given uh, you know a little bit of seed money there. Uh, definitely push him to give some more seed money next week. You can let him know yeah. I I asked about it. <laughs> Coming for you, Carlos. Can't wait. I'm really excited to meet with yeah. him. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy, energetic guy, and, uh, you know, something that uh, someone who, you know, the Parkville neighborhood, I, I think, needs. He's from that neighborhood, has roots there. You know, he's not like a outside developer coming in, um, so it's kind of personal for him, too, so it's cool to, uh, to work with him. Yeah, I'm happy to see the Parkville market, you know, starting to thrive with the paintings yeah. and the buildings and the businesses, and has a lot to do with Carlos and now you. That's <laughs> awesome. Figured you knew him. 
All right, you want to pick one or you just want me to pick? Go, you pick. What's it say? East Hartford murals. All right, East Hartford murals. Yeah, so, you know, very similar to the Parkville Paints project, we believe that public art needs to be local. So that means local community members informing what the public art that goes up in their town is. So while well, Rise Up uh, is kind of the, the fiscal manager and the project manager in making sure a lot of these projects happen, we put together local steering committees in each town we work in to actually you know, decide on what this art is gonna be. So it's not, again, some outside group coming in, it's a, a group that's gonna help uh, local community members make their projects uh, happen. I love the uh, Huskies one at the rent. Oh yeah. Wow, that's nice. That's amazing. Who did that one? Uh, Michael Rice. Michael Rice. Yep. Who did the Juneteenth? Uh, the Juneteenth one was Taya Thompson. Who did the bus stops? The bus stops uh, are really cool Yeah, too. bus stop was Joey Batts. All right, there's three, can you name? There's seven people on the project. You got Rice, you got so uh, we have Joshua Morgan was uh, another artist on the first MLK mural. Yep. Uh, Michaela Levesque uh, is another artist yep. on the second MLK mural. Yep. Um, and Andrea Sanchez also helped on the bus stop mural as well. And then we got a Odessa, Melody. So those are all are women. Are they part of the They were team. represented in the mural. Ooh, oops. So oops. Melody Curry, for example, she used to be the mayor of East Hartford and like uh, one of the top women like legislators and leaders in the state. Okay. Um, okay. So I, she's represented. corrected. <laughs> so yeah, the, the second racial equity mural we did in town features five, um, five women from East Hartford that nice. did great things. Uh, That's so cool. Yeah. I like East Hartford. East Hartford. All right. Art manifestation. Oh, yeah. So this is a really exciting event that we have going on May 13th. This is the third year we're hosting it. Um, this event is really about bringing Connecticut's creative community together. Um, you know, not, it's not a one town type of event. This is really bringing out all of the artists all the way down in Fairfield County, Litchfield County, you know, all together in a, in a central spot to have a great time, celebrate art. Um, we're gonna have immersive art experiences. We're gonna have projection mapping art on the Spaghetti Warehouse. So one of the biggest projection mapping shows the state's ever had. Um, what is that? Can you explain that? Yeah, so instead of you know painting a mural, this is digital art. So we have extremely high lumen projectors that yep. an artist is essentially gonna program and it's going to be artwork displaying and rotating through and like like a powerpoint presentation and, or you know, like a little bit more exciting than a powerpoint presentation but that idea it's we're going to be projecting up with a projector gotcha. onto the spaghetti warehouse gotcha where is that spaghetti warehouse on Bartholomew Ave in Parkville. Gotcha. Um, 50 Bartholomew Ave? So that is where my studio is uh, across the street is that. Gotcha. So hands on Hartford. And it's a long day. 12 to 11, yeah. So the day is going to change as, as it goes on. So we have a lot going on. During the day from 12 to 5, it's going to be really family-oriented, a lot of, you know, face painting, kids' activities, vendors, you know, those fun stuff. So, you know, if you're last-minute uh, Mother's Day shopping, come to Art Manifestation, Ooh. get some art. Um, we'll also have a, a, a beer garden, thanks to Hog River uh, Brewery. Nice. Um, Are they still also, there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're oh, still there. Yep. Um, they're going to be axe making... throwing is not there. Is axe, axe, throwing, axe throwing is not there. Sorry to bring that up. I know something left. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hog River, thank you, a, Hog River. Yeah. That's awesome. And they're going to be making a special art manifestation uh, drink that day for us, so that'll be exciting. Is that an exclusive? It'll be an exclusive. You heard it here first. Yeah. Special <laughs> drinks, thank to Hog River. That is at the art manifestation May thirteenth, twelve to eleven, fifty Bartholomew Ave. Yeah. I'm going to be there. Um, another cool thing about the event is we're going to have. Uh, well, the event itself is free to the public. We're going to have a special VIP celebrity dinner at Gather 55, which is a part of Hands on Hartford. Um, they're going to be doing a four-course meal for us, bottle of wine, beautiful experience. Um, so that is a, a VIP ticketed experience, $150 a ticket. Same day uh, or different same day? Same day. Yep, same day. So you can buy. What time is that? Uh, that'll be. Throughout the day? 
Uh, no, it'll be evening, evening dinner. So there'll be a seating, um, seating dinner. I, I wish I had the exact time. We're we're changing some things right now. Yeah, Xavier but. Santiago from the place to be was a special guest there. Yes, I want to say in March in fifty fifty five. Yep. So we were hoping to pull him in as the celebrity chef for for this, but he's uh, tied up. He's coming that on night. the podcast. Cool, cool. We had a scheduling uh, mix up, but he's coming on the podcast. He's awesome. Cool. I've never eaten there. Have you eaten there? I've had lunch and breakfast there. Nice. Uh, really great food. Like for a place where someone can go and not pay anything, you're getting top quality food. Uh, and the cool thing is, you know, they don't just give it out. You know, people have to volunteer, clean up. Like you have to kind of pay it forward in yeah. the model, which That's is That's an amazing awesome. concept. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad it's working out. Yeah. How long has it been, been going? Don't quote me. Uh, a year? Oh uh, yeah, maybe year? maybe six months or so. Yeah, maybe I feel like last summer is when they they started. All right, art for hope. Oh yeah, nationwide public art tour. Yeah, so this is a, a really exciting project that we're doing in partnership with uh, Bears Barbecue Foundation and the Jordan Porco Foundation. Um, this is a, a nationwide public art tour uh, where we're going to be doing 50 murals in 50 states and culminating with a, a giant hope festival. So think of that hope festival like uh, your farm aid. So this is going to be like a three-day long, like people are flying in Stop. from all over That's the country. Awesome. Um so yeah, that's a not like the fire fest though. No, no, a little, bit, <laughs> a little bit better than that. Yeah, um, but this is all around you know bringing awareness to mental health and the social determinants of health. And what we do is when a, a community reaches out to us for this project, you know, it's we always say public art is so much more than public art, and it's because of those steering committees and the community that we bring together to make that mural happen. So during the process of planning these projects, we're bringing together mental health resources. We're like literally sol trying to solve problems of access to mental health challenges in a community. We have police department, we have community members, we have the healthcare system, mental health providers, all on the steering committee. So connecting committee. resources that may not you have been it. getting together. You got it. And amazing. Wow, that's another Over great. Art, you know? Can Friends of Feeney get involved? Absolutely. Be a good friend. Yeah. And then, yeah, breaking the stigma of, of mental health. You what, got it. What, is it depression, anxiety, or all? All of it. All okay. of it. Um, all of it. Uh, so, you know, a really great example of a resource we brought to the table. And we kicked this project off. It was at Yard Goat Stadium um, 2020. Broke the Guinness Book of World Record for the longest chain of carabiners linked together. <laughs> To represent linked for life, you know, you're linking together to, to support one another. We beat a, um, a Boy Scout troop uh, somewhere. How many times did you go around the field? Uh, I, I don't remember how long, how many. But uh, Where's we, the Guinness Book of World Record record? You have it? We have it. Come on. We have it. We have you're the record. You're a record holder? We Guinness have the record. record. Yeah. That is amazing. Um, and we turned all those carabiners into artwork. So there's a giant hope sculpture down at Bears Barbecue in New Haven. Um, that we installed outside of there to kind of kick all this off. Um, but, but the cool thing was, during the event, uh, we partnered with Talkspace, which is a virtual therapy company to offer free therapy sessions to anyone participating in this event. And the amount of people that took that <laughs> up on that offer and like the feedback we got, like, oh, thank you. You know, I was able to give this to my, my sister as a gift. I even took therapy for the first time because of this process, you know? Yeah. It just made it like, oh, you get a therapy session, you get a therapy session. Yeah. So we all, we all took therapy yeah, sessions. Yeah, breaking the stigma there, <laughs> yeah. too. Like, therapy's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I like it. This was a good one. You mentioned this earlier. Yeah, MLK 39. So uh, we got that in West Hartford and right now in... 14 other communities. The goal is to have 39 towns and cities signed up in Connecticut uh, to paint these larger-than-life murals that bring, uh, you know, a message of diversity and inclusion into communities across the Torrington state. Torrington has one. Torrington, yeah. Who's the other guy in the Torrington picture? John Brown. Oh, yeah. Who is that? So John Brown is... Uh, and who, who, who? Oh, yeah. Um... So John Brown was an abolitionist. So Torrington is very proud of, of John Brown. Gotcha. Because um, he was really one of uh, a major fighters to end slavery. He was like one of those white guys that was just like 
give me a gun and I'm going to go kill me some racist. <laughs> nice. like, that's how intense he was. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're proud of him. Is he, does he have ties to Torrington? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he was born there. Um, and who's that? That is Amanda Gorman. Okay. Uh, so poet. The poet. That's what I yep. Thought. So yep. her, her uh, poem's out on the mural, too. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay, gotcha. John Brown. All right. I couldn't think. I'm like, is that an Irish poet? What's going and, on? And you know John what's crazy? Brown. My aunt and uncle live in uh, Saratoga, California, out by San Jose. At the end of their street is a cemetery. John Brown's wife is buried in that cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle was walking around one day, literally sees this. It was just like, no like, way. The connection. And, yeah. <laughs> But 39, for 39 years of Martin of Luther Martin King. King's life. The, is, will he be featured in every, all 39? So, so or he is it hasn't. Just, no, he okay. actually, there's been a couple where he hasn't been the focal point. It's, you know, and this is where it comes back to the community to, to inform what the project is. So in Southington, they actually chose to represent youth in the community. So parents submitted pictures of their kids doing different activities, playing lacrosse, playing soccer, you know, fishing with their grandpa. So their message of, of racial equality and unity was to feature the youth. And um, so MLK is, I think there may be an MLK quote in there, but it's just really featuring the wow. future. you got amazing stuff going on. I am Thank impressed, you. and I want to get more involved. <laughs> I'm so happy to be talking with you right now. Episode 71, Matt Conway, the Rise Up group. We've got two more, three more. More than just murals. Yeah. yeah you have been elaborating on that, too, just yeah. connecting resources, breaking it. stigmas. The youth, you know, our, they, our focus is still youth development. Um, while, while a lot of this mural work helps to underwrite and uh, kind of raise money for the, the work we do with youth, um, we're operating after school programs and summer programs across the state. Um, and it's really meant to, to give kids that extra opportunity at something positive and um, whether they become artists or not in the future, you know, they're learning the process of this community work and this development work and public speaking skills, budgeting skills, um, all of it. So just a really holistic program. It is more than just murals for yeah. sure. So you had East Hartford and now you have Stamford murals. Yeah, so very similar to East Hartford. We have a, a local team down in Stamford um, that we, we work with and work in schools, create public art. We host an annual festival called Off Main Experience down in Stanford, uh, September 23rd. Um, very similar to Art Manifestation, but a little bit less party vibe as you get to the evening and more family focused. So uh, cool event. And then this is a good one, being a third grade teacher, the studio and the art club open studio. Yeah, so the, the, the studio is our, our physical studio spaces that we have in Bridgeport and Hartford. Um, so at the studio spaces, we offer workshops, classes. You can rent the space for your art galleries, for your own exhibits. Um, and it's just really a place that's incubating some of these projects that you see out in the public. So think of the, the studio as our headquarters. And the art club is our network of artists across the state. So if you're an artist and you want to be part of Rise Up Team, you want to you know, be a part of the work we're doing, go on our website, sign up for the art club. Um, and that you know, provides resources, connects artists together, networking. Um, and that Maybe we could do like a kid-friendly one because an elementary school teacher would love to have the kids' mm. artwork on display, a full event. Yeah, that'd be Let's cool. Let's collaborate. Yeah. That'd be, I think so that sounds that fun. Happen. 35 bucks a class, you have dirt salon, mixed media, uh, slime time, that's slime always time. a huge hit. Yeah. Yeah. Tie-dye, but you called it indigo dyeing? Why is it called indigo dyeing? I'm not too sure. Okay. I'll have to talk I to love it. some tie-dye. <laughs> I had a tie-dye, tie-dye everything. Very cool, that was, yeah. um, you broke down the website and you really explained it in some detail. Uh, that was great, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. One, one thing, I mean, you may have this in your docket to ask about this space. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Where are we now? 91 <laughs> Memorial Road. So we're Beautiful building. We are sitting in the community exchange, and uh, the community exchange is you know, much bigger than the physical space that we're sitting in, but it's, it's more of an idea and concept of West Hartford and you know, other towns outside 
needing a community space to exchange ideas, thoughts, business, you know, all of that. So we've really been using this community exchange space to do that by hosting other nonprofit events here. We've hosted uh, a Lunar New Year event. We've hosted Black History Month events, which your daughter has some uh, artwork yep. up here too. Right over here. Um, we've hosted uh, the evolution of black hair. So we really want the community the exchange to become, you know, a, a cultural uh, hub for the community in West Hartford. Did you name it the Community Exchange, or did it come with that name? No, we named it. So okay. it was myself and gotcha. uh, our partner Adrian, who's been on yep. the um, been on the podcast too, uh, and Jason Chang, who's a Board of Ed member. We're all yep. kind of we got a, a nice little group text, and we should invite you in because I'm come sure on. you'd uh, get me in there. Yeah, yeah. I want to have Jason on the podcast awesome. too. Ace mentioned him on her yeah. podcast. Cool. But, uh, um, so yeah, we're, we all kind of just, what, what should this be called? What should this represent? And, you know, for the forever, this was a expensive furniture store, yeah. you know? Um, and what we kept hearing about Blueback Square is like people out like in Edgewood in different parts of West Hartford, they don't feel like Blueback is for them. And you know, I, I don't think that uh, anyone from a town should feel like a certain place isn't for them in their own town. Yeah. And so really creating this place and nurturing this space in Blueback helps to attract more people who may not w have wanted to step foot in Blueback into into the center here and, and make them feel like, you know, people in the community listen to them and, and they want them to, to be in Blueback. No, I had an amazing time. I met an author. I bought two books. They, she signed them to my students. I forgot her name. Do you remember her name? Charnay. Charnay. Charnay Gordon. Yep. yep. Um, one was The Earth is Our Friend, Our Friends. Uh, there was a teacher one, a friend one. Oh. But uh, yeah. it was a wonderful time. You had music. You had a DJ, food, tables doing art. My daughters had a blast. Yeah, we got Luna Pizza coming on. Luna, last episode, Alex said he is hosting and sponsoring pizza every podcast. Wow. And Marsha Lucky guess. Right? So that, and Marsha was, ep, she was episode 69. She wrote questions for Alex. Alex wrote some questions for you. Oh, okay. You're going to write some questions for Ted Goiner, who does the West Hartford Tree Program. Okay, Donating cool. trees yeah, to help awesome. more trees. Yeah, or you could also write some questions for Carlos because okay. he's next week. <laughs> and sorry massive. to cut you off. Yeah, but this is a beautiful back to exchange, exchange plaza. Community exchange. Community exchange. Yes. Um, I mean, I mean, it's so spacious and beautiful, and just like, I, I see like dinner parties, mm. dances, art exhibits. Um, your, we had a. Um, black girl in her braids. That yeah. was a cool Evolution little thing. of black hair. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, That's my wife's uh, organization. So Nice. Yeah. No, beautiful place. 91 Memorial. We're going to, uh, if you have any ideas out there, please contact Matt uh, we, at riseupgroup.org. If you have some, some community-based activities that you would like to host at 91 Memorial, Friends of Feeney is going to try to get in here. Awesome. I think we're going to start podcasting here. What do you think? Kyle likes the lights. <laughs> yep. And this is my kid, Neela. Again, great artwork, lots of fun, turtles. All right, storytelling game. We'll do events, rise up events. Your first event, your last event, your best event, your worst event. Okay. Our, our first event uh, was a, our first fundraising event, I guess, because uh, we started doing you know community stuff before we had a dollar in our bank account. We just probably you just saw a need and you'd go. Yep. <laughs> um, so, uh, but our first fundraising event was in 2013, January, 2013. Uh, we called it cocktails for change. Um, we were a bunch of early college graduates. So of course, cocktails for change was the appropriate name <laughs> for the event. Um, but, uh, you know, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, but it was incredible learning experience. It was a ton of fun. Um, it was the the first and last time we did not 
hire an event planner. So ever since then, we've had someone externally help us uh, navigate the process. But um, like I mentioned earlier, I just like to roll my sleeves up and, and do things. So we figured it out. It was a great time, great turnout. Um, I'll come back to how this kind of turned into the worst event later in the evening. Um, it's not bad, but a funny s story. Um, so that's the first event. Next one was the, the last event we yep. had. So the last event we had was, uh, I think, in here, actually, yeah. was our series of events we hosted in January and February in the, the community exchange um, we're also doing a bunch of projects just externally now too that I guess wouldn't be considered events. Uh, best event, um, best event was probably last year's art manifestation. Uh, it really turned the needle for like what a fundraising event, nonprofit event could be and do. Uh, you know. A lot of times you think of a gala or a fundraising event for a nonprofit, you just you know, buy your ticket, you sit at the table, you eat your food, and you kind of go. And maybe there's a band or something, but we really went all out and gave people an experience that you would get in New York City, in Boston, in like, you know, one of the bigger cities, we gave them that experience here in, in Connecticut. Um, and I think it just really set the tone for this year and a lot of the growth that we've seen over the past oh, nice. couple months. And that that manifestation is at the May 13th. May 13th, month? yep. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. I'm so, worst event, you know, not worst, but like that first event where we didn't have that event planner. Um, it was at, I lived at Hartford 21 in downtown Hartford at the time, and we just hosted it right in, in my apartment building. There was a small event space was with a little kitchen. Um, and we, Instead of getting it professionally catered as well, like we had a couple friends who like were cooks or chefs and so they volunteered their time and we used that kitchen and we ended up clogging the dishwasher, the sink and we end up at like midnight, everything is just overflowing from this thing. <laughs> and there is a bridal shower the next morning. Mm. And so <clears throat> The, the soon-to-be bride came in that night to, like, start set up and bringing her stuff there. And she sees a bunch of, like, 20-year-olds after an open bar party <laughs> shoveling, <laughs> literally shoveling this stuff. We don't even know what it was. It was, like, pink foam and, like, it was gross um, out of the, uh, the sink and dishwasher. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was uh, in fun. <laughs> she must have been like, "Oh my!" Yeah, so you can imagine, like, especially now that I'm married, like my what my wife would have thought walking into this right before oh, yeah. our wedding. It, yeah, her yeah. nerves are high right <laughs> yeah. there too. That's great. You did the first, last, best, worst. Yeah. Cool. All right, now let's talk a little bit about um, you. Oh wait, hold on. yep, yep, yep. So right here. So I heard this is the. Nardwar, you know Nardwar? I got a question for you that's going to blow your mind here. Okay. This is a funny on the other side. I heard you have an obsessive compulsive cleaning and organizing issue <laughs> to the point where you subconsciously clean up while on calls <laughs> and may or may not have thrown out your wife's food on a cleanup, uh, you know, <laughs> stuck in the cleanup. You accidentally threw her food into the garbage while it was in front of her. True or false? That's true, and it's probably happened on more than one occasion. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like a pacer when I'm like on calls or in a meeting. Uh, you know, I got my earphones. I'm just like walking, and I am kind of a neat freak, so it's like perfect time to do thing, two things at once. Yep. But I'm just in a zone that I'm not even looking what I'm grabbing, and some stuff ends up in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. I like... So you like the headset and kind of walk and talk? AirPods, yeah. Oh, yeah, earbuds, yeah. yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's cool. It's not headset anymore. Yeah. Earbuds. All right. And you're such a giver. He doesn't ask for anything in return. Loves his family, spending time with his family. You know who wrote me this? Who? We, we, we hung out at Parkville together. Oh, Robert Gary. Rob. Because I, I was like, there's this guy, Nardwar. And he goes around and asking rappers and actors, and he'll ask them about their eighth grade, where they worked, <laughs> uh, 
a record that they wrote went by another name, and they're like, ah. <laughs> so that was my first Narwhal fact. I tried to get something that would have. <laughs> yeah, well, well, thank you for the kind words, Robert. <laughs> yeah, that was my Narwhal. Narwhal. All right, and then we got another game. We got a lot of games here. Oh, so you, you know art. Uh, Do you know artists? I know local artists. Okay. Oh, so you don't if, know. If this is like an art history lesson, I'm probably going to get it so, wrong. So if I were to show you this guy. <laughs> New York City. Oh, the uh, 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 Basquet, right? Yeah. Nice. Very cool. The the crown. That's all I know. Yeah. Good. Uh, Luna Pizza asks a question about that guy. I didn't know who it was. Ah. Who's his partner? Uh, uh, Andy Warhol, I think. If it wasn't his partner, he had the same studio. They were in the same building. I'm yeah, New sure. York guy. Yeah. Wait, where are we? There was like a, a group of kind of like legendary this. artists from yeah. that studio space. I don't know this guy's name, but I know, yeah, Keith Herring. There it is. Yep. Keith Herring. So he's got incredible artwork in Philadelphia. So that little guy that you see there. Oh, that's it's his? On the, yeah, it's on the entire side of a building. Nike uses this too. And um, Nike, Adidas. Mm. I see that um, Sparrow has this in okay. their place. And then these two guys. So we do a would you rather and Luna Pizza Alex, way before this whole art thing was gonna ask you, Basquet, Basquette or Herring? I like Jean Michael. Basquet, yeah. And I go, no not knowing the context, <laughs> I get a text. I go, Basquette and Herring. I'm like, knowing thinking he's a food guy. I go, Are these types of fish that you're asking me? Yeah, big yeah he's got a really cool style. Um, and one of the artists we work with, uh, Candice Marsh John, um, she gets a lot of her inspiration from some of his work, and it, it's really cool. Really makes you think. Oh, good. All right, let's see. Oh, they, they got little clues on the shirt. Ah, okay, okay. And these are all thanks to Jocelyn Austin. She is the president of the Girls Softball League, mm -hmm. and she is also the art teacher at Woke It. Fantastic art teacher. Wow. We should collab with her. We'll get Definitely. some kids' artwork down here or... Um, she's fantastic. So thank you, Jocelyn. Picasso. <laughs> Boom. That was a good one. Picasso. Uh, Walt Disney. <laughs> Walt Disney. I got ones that I would get right. So <laughs> well, this I'm glad. A, it could... This one's a tough one, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. Mary Cassette, okay. No, didn't know that one either. Didn't know this one either. I don't know this guy. <laughs> Henry, <laughs> Henry. All right, you'll know this. Oh, I just gave it away. Oh, that's Andy Warhol. her name come on I, I don't know her name but she has an incredible new installation where like she's essentially a robot this like 100 foot tall robot like on outside of a building yeah so she's still yayo cosimo yayo cosimo all right cool there's so many she had them up on her wall yeah and i was like all right let me take down a few don't know this guy don't <laughs> know this guy i know this guy then i was like do any of these guys do murals <laughs> And pop art is like murals. Yeah. What was it? These guys would take empty, ep empty street signs or subway signs mm -hmm. and create a whole elaborate thing on the blank canvases. That so, uh, and then I did some internet research on these guys. They're phenomenal. And I was like, didn't know who they were yeah. last week when Luna Pizza asked. <laughs> and now for this week, you know, you got to be a lifelong learner. You got to. And now I'm very interested in learning more, but I, now I see this everywhere, and I see that. Really cool. All right, that was our art game. What'd you think? Awesome. You passed? I'm, I eh, probably could have done better, given uh, we make art, but. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so, Suffield High? Suffield UConn. High, UConn. Yeah. What do you want to talk and about? And then U-Hart, too. Okay. Yeah. So, MBA at U-Hart. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to Cigna. Got to give them a thank you for that. <laughs> And Suffield High. How's Suffield? Uh, I, you know, I, 
so when I left for college, I'm like, I'm never coming back to a small town like Suffield. Uh, and I, we buy our house in East Granby, which is the next town over. But uh, <laughs> um, East Granby has a little bit, uh, I would say, wider view on society than Suffield did. Um, love my you know, hometown. My parents still live there. Incredible teachers, you know, in school. Um, but it's a old farm town. So, you know, like a lot of communities, especially suburban communities in Connecticut, it has its old roots and it's got its kind of newer generation that wants to see some progress. And there's just a constant battle there. Yeah. Um, My nephews go on Southfield and future guests. He's, we're going to do a, he's like 13. Nick, we're going to talk a fantasy football when fantasy oh, football awesome. comes around. Suffield. Um, and East Granby, yeah. my wife, thousand point scorer, names on the gym, Ooh, in the gym. Beautiful. If you walk into East Granby, Nicole Dowling, thousand point. So beautiful, smart, but I married her because she scored a thousand points. <laughs> 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 Kidding, but yeah, East Granby, got to love it. And then Suffield, um, that's it. Yeah. My nephew, you, yeah. you're there now. East Grammy, you're there. Yeah. All right. We lived. In, I lived in downtown Hartford for a while too, so we're the, I was there for almost like most of my twenties actually. Have you ever eaten at um, Tiger Belly? That's a. I think I've gotten delivery from there. Oh wait, that's in East Granby, right? You yeah. told you told me about that yeah. right when we were at Parkville Market. Yeah, you, you didn't and go yet. We're talking about. Oh. We went, and honestly, it was disappointing. Ooh. Yeah, it, the the service just wasn't there. We were also the only ones there. It was like a weird vibe. It, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. We if, were, if it was like we were going there for a quick takeout lunch thing, it may have been good, but we were going there for a sit-down dinner. It just didn't have like that vibe, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey. No, I thought the food was great. Um, but, yeah, it was also weird. There was like one other person there. Yeah. And they, they were from West <laughs> Hartford, former podcast guest, the Callan – not the count, the Sherry boys, the Sherry, they're twins. They run at Stanford now. They're cool. number one and two runners. Wow. And, and I happen to see them there. Yeah. Of all places. Um, good spot. All right. Speaking of, uh, well, your choice. Do you want to talk favorite teacher? Because you mentioned teaching, or do you want to talk favorite restaurant? Follow up questions for both. Uh, we could do restaurant. All right. A actually, no, let's do teacher, because you're, you're a teacher. So teacher. I'd love to talk 19 education. years. Nine years at the school that I went to in Waterbury. Wow. Mrs. Jarrell was my fifth grade teacher. She actually taught me how to take notes on index cards. Huh. So I incorporate that. Uh, and then she was the principal who hired me. So she was my fifth grade teacher. Mm. So I did an eight minute speak up about Mrs. Jarrell. Very important woman in my life. That's, and then now I teach in my 10th year at Wolka Elementary School, same school that my daughters went to. Mm. Very cool. That's awesome. Your favorite teacher. I have a, a couple, but one that always pops up in conversations, and it's ironic because my cousins are at Suffield High now, and uh, one of them calls, says Mr. Castellari is her favorite teacher too. Um, and so, yeah, he was my, I had only two math teachers through high school. Um, we alternated every year between, uh, you know, up through calculus, and um, he was my, I had him freshman year, and I had him for pre-calculus. Um, and he was just, he was a challenging teacher. He like pushed you hard. <laughs> um, he was not easy by any means, but yeah. um, the respect he gave all of his students and like him, he was always fair too, but him challenging you is what got the best out of his students, I felt. And he referred to everybody as Mr., Mrs., or whatever they wanted to be referred to. It was always last name, and he just felt like, you guys call me Mr. Castellari? I need to give that respect back to you. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, he was just a, a really great guy, brilliant. Is he um, still there? Yeah, pretty sure he's still there. Uh, he also coached um, the track team or the cross-country team as well, and he's still involved in that. Uh, but he was, you know, his trade was engineering. So he was like initially going to go engineering path and then pivoted to being a teacher. So he's able to do like the most incredible math problems in his brain. Like we would just challenge him and like down to like 20 decimal points, he was able to like sit there in and his brain. It? In, in, insane. <laughs> Castellari? Castellari. 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 Yep. 
Uh, he was uh, born in Trinidad and Tobago, grew up in Italy, and then came over to America. <laughs> oh, wow. Phenomenal story. Yeah. Mr. Castellari. Castellari. Oh. Castellari. Yeah, if you didn't notice, I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> Castellari. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for being a great teacher, Mr. Castellari. Was a Mark Janik there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he was another math teacher, I think, right? Is there si math or science? Yeah, it's Longer my buddy. hair, right? Yeah, that's yeah, my buddy. Yeah, 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 he's still there. He's like the yeah. union president of Suffield. Cool. Um, Mr. Castellari. Anybody else? Uh, Miss Kimmett was my other math teacher. She was great as well. Um, uh, who else was good? Those, I mean, those were great. I, I'm sorry if I'm not, you know, shouting you out right now. But uh, And what about your parents? They weren't your favorite teachers? Oh, I mean, that's obvious. Uh, they, they're they huge influences on me. Um, you know, it started with, with them before uh, even going to school. So my mom actually started a daycare and preschool because she didn't want to send her kids to a daycare and preschool. Um, so she actually, I, I grew up, you know, going to there. Oh, sorry, Marsha's um, calling pizza. Oh, pizza here? Yeah, it's, Glad Marsha. Why so, didn't you become an educator? Come on. Why aren't, didn't I? Aren't your brothers and sisters educators too? Yeah. Uh, my, well, my sister just left teaching when she had a kid and just couldn't, she decided to do something else instead of go back. Um, but yeah, t my, all of my siblings and my sister-in-law all went to school for teaching. My brother ended up working at a vet office, so still, you know, serving uh, dogs and animals. But um, yeah, I don't know exactly why. I, uh, growing up, I had a lot of motivation from like a business sense, so... I always wanted to like get into real estate and like there was some of those things that interested me. Um, never thought I was gonna be in this kind of community space initially, but then through high school and college, you know, different things happen and I'm like, I can't sell my soul to corporate America. And so, you know, I start immediately looking for things and ways to give back um, and started with mentoring youth um, right out of college. But uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I've thought about like, uh, so when I was at GE Capital, um, I actually almost applied for Teach for America. So this is my second stint in like leaving corporate America. Uh, I did it once before when I worked for GE Capital. I was uh, uh, thought I was gonna apply to Teach for America and do that, but I'm like, oh no, I, I can get Rise Up going. So quit GE, moved back to Connecticut and um, started Rise Up, but realized like, uh, you need to have funding for as a nonprofit to like actually be able to do that for your job. Um, so I needed to go back to to work <laughs> until we grew the the nonprofit big enough. And you know, ten years later now, um, I've been able to leave my my job and do it full time now and uh, pay myself a little bit for it. That's so, amazing. Yeah, very cool. That's your nonprofit, and in, yeah, but you're helping society. You're making connections. You're helping yeah. the youth. You're incorporating art, which is a mm. school subject. You're in the teacher role. You're a yeah. mentor. You're yeah. a leader. You're nah, you're doing great things. And then maybe if uh, Dr. Conway, can you get me a job? <laughs> I want to be a principal someday, Dr. Conway. Talk to me. Will, you, will your dad see this? Oh, yeah. All right, Send cool. Thanks. Um, Eric Feeney, third grade teacher. <laughs> but I have an 092 degree. Uh, we got a special guest. Oh, I see, see Mr. Robert guest? Gary over there. You said some nice things about me. Yeah, we already hit on your <laughs> obsessive clean thing. Here, you can sit, pull up a chair real quick and grab the mic. Come on, we got to ask you a few questions. Oh. And here is Robert. Robert actually made this connection. Yeah. And I'm very thankful that he did. You just come from school class? No, I'm going to spin class. Oh. So it was... Perfect location. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Going to spin class. Talk about spin. How's the spin? Where are you going to spin? Uh, cycle bar. Nice. Tell me about your first spin class, your last spin <laughs> class, your best spin <laughs> class, and your worst spin class. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always top five, though. So. Oh, nice. My best class would be number one. Mm. My worst class will be five. Well, below. Well, yeah. We've always had our bad days. <laughs> but with regard to this connection, um, I was really happy to get 
two great gentlemen together who do so much for the community. And you know, I met through weird circumstances through rock and roll. And um, <laughs> so uh, I know I, I remember meeting Eric um, because we were standing right in Blueback Square when Rob L. Arcon's band, Sunday Vinyl, was playing. Oh, that's oh, right. Amazing. And that's he right. just said, oh, Eric Pini over there is, uh, runs this not-for-profit. And I walked over and handed you the money. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been so, handing me money, yeah. money ever since. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, Matt at Bears, uh, yeah. some other fundraiser. Um, I forget even what it was for. So I think I was just, I, Bears, I mean, Jamie shared something, like shared our Facebook yes. fundraiser. And That's then good. you saw it. Right. And then you messaged me and you're yeah. like, who are you? Yeah. Like, how, <laughs> how come I don't know about Rise Up yet? And right. we grabbed a drink at Bears mm -hmm. and the rest is history. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. And you've been giving us money since. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, mind you, but yeah, I get what I can. Rob, <laughs> Rob is a good friend. Yes. Hashtag good friend. Yes. Yep. Thank you for being such a good friend. It's, yep. it's good people like Rob. There are many Robs in West Hartford. They find the cause, uh, and they'll support, and they'll help out, you know, making connections, donating, volunteering. But thank you, Rob, and there's so many other Robs there, too. Sure. These small organizations have such a big impact on, you know, the local community mm. and people and just awareness of problems that otherwise go unnoticed. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Some more nice words. I know. This guy's all right. So who On wants camera. To... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to go first? What makes Matt a good friend? Hmm. Go ahead. I have to formulate that now. Or what oh, makes I, Rob I to, make... Oh, oh. He, he's always there. You know, <laughs> always there to, to cook for you. He's always there to donate when he can, share when he can, volunteer when he can, give you a hug when you need it. Yep. So... Having a friend that's always there is, is critical. Yeah. And it's to have that idea to say, hey, Friends of Feeney's got something really cool going on. Rise up. Let me make this connection. That's it. And then we met at Parkville. Yes. What are you doing next Monday? I'm interviewing Carlos Muta at Parkville. Oh, really? Swing by there, too. I will figure out if there's a way. For, what time? 4.30. Okay. 4.30? All right. Same time. I'll give you a good example of, like, just another connector right that he does i was at another event in the west end of hartford um, and he's at an event at bushnell park and he texted me he's like where are you why aren't you at this event i have a funder i need you to meet and i'm like i'm at this other event he's like well you need to come here <laughs> like when you're done and so i you know go right there afterwards and he connects me with uh, the Bissell Foundation. Um, obviously, he was talking us up, you know, incredibly before I even arrived and pretty much sealed the deal for us. And now Bissell Foundation, we're now in our fourth year of major grants from them. Um, nice. and they just renewed a two-year $10,000 grant. So That's awesome. we don't have to apply for one next year. They, it's just coming. <laughs> so it's Very great. Very cool, yeah. Rob. Well, my, That's fantastic. My strength is my big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about that's about it. And, you know, Matt, as you know from talking to him, is just a really genuine guy. You, you know, there's no, preten there's no pretense, and everything is just real and genuine. And um, and uh, I'm honest. So, Thank you. Know, you're welcome. <laughs> cool. All right, we're going to get into favorite restaurant. Oh, cool. gosh. Favorite restaurant. I could get in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a back. Oh, you're out a lot, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we start. I'm just going to go with Salute. That is just my, you know, there's obviously more exotic stuff. There's mm -hmm. other flavor, like there's other places you can go. Mm -hmm. But for the most consistent meal for at least a decade now, you go to Salute. You yeah. know, if you're bringing someone to town and you want a, a definite good meal, good vibe, feel like your family. Great you service. Take them to Salute. Yeah. Um, they did our wedding. Uh, you know, feel like home every time you're there. Nice. And I'll go to, uh, and I'll say because I knew Jimmy Crossgrove long, much longer <laughs> than that, way back to Hot Tomatoes, you know, you're never going to get a um, better experience overall than Salute with somebody who, you know, not only remembers everybody and treats everybody like family, but they give back so much. Yeah. And, you know, I could name 10 places in Parkville that are amazing and so many little restaurants. It, it, it's hard to, it's hard for people, some people to imagine how great of a food community this is. Oh, yeah. They'll get out there and try some of the amazing little ethnic restaurants that are yeah. yes speaking of food hmm. oh episode 69 marsha mccurdy <laughs> adele deputy fire marshal 
acting uh, as Uber Eats delivery today. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this is Matt Conway. Hello, Thanks how are you? And Rob Gary. Hi, how and are you? And you know Kyle. And I do apologize, I swear, I swear I told you, I'm so sorry. But you told me that you were interviewing the folks from here, but I didn't know it was gonna be on location. Oh, like, uh, mm -hmm. yep. Oopsies. So we need to get the capacity increased in here. Oh yeah, now that you're here. Only 49 people we were I know, I saw to. that. But I think that there was probably a different setup where... It's been open since... All right, well, duly noted. <laughs> All right. Is that the occupancy of a store full of furniture? They Friends put the occupancy after oh, okay. everything was taken out. We're doing favorite restaurant. Favorite restaurant. What was your favorite restaurant again? Oh, I had that place in Chicago called Firehouse that burned down. Firehouse. Mm -hmm. oh. It was an old firehouse. Firehouse that burned down. That's oh, the irony. I, and right? you, I think you said that too. It's very ironic. <laughs> irony. Isn't it ironic? Isn't, Isn't it ironic? ironic? <laughs> well, we're going to get into these. too ironic. Um, oh, follow up questions. So you're at yeah. Salute. Yes. You can eat with four dinner guests, dead or alive. Wow. Who are you eating with? Well, that's a tough one. Oh, I can't. I gotta wear this shirt tomorrow. <laughs> White shirt oh, yes. pizza is always a recipe for disaster. Before I make a mess, let me just shout out the shirt. Tomorrow's World Down Syndrome Day. Ah. Oh. And Aria Knees is my student. Aria Knees. Let me slide over. Aria Knees was my third grader. She's now in fifth grade. And her sister, Yarrant. Yarilies, Yarilies, rising up. See, a rise up, mm -hmm. <laughs> rise up group. We're rising up with Yari. So we have Yari, uh, World Down Syndrome. Uh, Arianese wrote a wonderful piece, written piece about her sister and about the importance of respecting everyone and their abilities with Down Syndrome. We're wearing crazy socks tomorrow. Um, and they've given me a t-shirt now for four years in a row. So I had to wear it on the podcast. So thank you, Emily. And thank you, Arianese. And we will be rocking our socks tomorrow for World Down Syndrome Day. So please wear your mismatched or bright colored socks and be thinking of Yara Lees. Yara Lees. Hashtag rising up mm. on the Rise Up podcast. <laughs> now let's, hopefully I don't make a mess on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so for, uh, oh, nice. I know what that is. Irish cream. <laughs> Come on. Pull up. Let's get into this pizza. One bite. Everybody knows the rules. Don't eat pizza and get on a bike. That's the rule. Yeah. <laughs> what time is your class? Six o'clock. Oh, okay. It's a word. How you doing? How you doing? I'm so sorry. It's okay. I owe you. It's cold pizza. I put the heat on high so I can try and make it like, oh, it'll still be warm. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. It didn't work. No? Pizza is one of those things that's good any time of day, any temperature. Mm. Not a cold pizza. Like, no? I always microwave it. Three in the morning, it's really good. Cold. I still need like a little of the right. melty cheese. Right. Well, then we'll do your questions. Respect. All right, we got crazy questions coming I'm next. I'm older than microwaves, you know. We had the uh, Four dinner pizza. guests. Sometimes. We had a regrettable, she had her four. Then she emailed and was upset that she did not invite Flo Joe. Oh, yeah. Florence. John, the runner? Gr Gr Griffin, Griffin John. Joiner. Oh, and Hoda, Hoda copy. She, she had the uh, one spandex yeah. leg up and one showing the. Yeah. Monster. That was cool. Mm -hmm. For sure. Every morning. All right, what do you got? Who's your guest? Oh, Dinner I guest. forgot the question. I'm sorry. Dead or alive? I got distracted by anything. That you know, Robert mentioned earlier, <laughs> I'm a family guy. There's no people I'd rather have family with other than my wife and my daughter and Sanaya, who not with us anymore, but with us in spirit. So, Good call. Mm. Um, now I can't do the same thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he did nail it, and now I'm in a bad position. So who do I want to have dinner with? Can we come back to that question? Mm -hmm. All right, good. This has got to be a really good answer. Yeah, so next question. This is great pizza, too. Good pizza. Mm -hmm. Nice. You've got to have the well, crispy under the carriage. Oh got the flop. You may have seen that Hartford was the number two pizza city. I saw that. that was crazy. It was crazy. Instead of, instead of New Haven. But instead of New Haven wasn't even on the list. Yeah. But it wasn't about quality of pizza. It was about it. Uh, of accessibility places. of pizza. Oh, right. Yeah, so it was a very strange he, survey. He didn't tell you about his pizza, did he? His homemade pizza? Hmm? No? Napkins. Okay. 
Oh. Get some slices, Kyle. Yeah, the pizza that he ordered is unique. Oh, yeah. Okay. No cheese. All sauce. Interesting. So you have to have respect for the red pie, mm -hmm. which you can get at Zephyr Street Pizza, right? Um, as well, it's, the, it's a traditional old um, Italian pie, uh, a red pie. Just grated cheese. Speaking to an Italian here, so. Yeah, you usually do the parm and some, some and garlic. A, uh, I do pecorino up. Romano, a little red and pepper flake, and I'm a happy person. Fresh mm -hmm. garlic on a pizza. Oh, Amazing. my God, yes. If you haven't tried it, you have to try mm -hmm. it. I like anchovies also. Okay, I like that. So I like pepperoni and anchovies. It's a salt bomb in your mouth. It's super mm. Some hot cherry peppers. I've never met someone who likes anchovies on their pizza. Yorkside Pizza. Amazing. It was my <laughs> second date with my wife. We lived in Southern. Yorkside's right around the corner from Toad's Place, right near yeah. Yale. I get the Yorkside pizza. I get a side of anchovies. Oh, she looked at me like, what? She the? knew you were the one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? A side of them. Oh, my God. And I'm mm -hmm. dangling them on mm -hmm. there. Just a mess. And here we are, 20 years All the later. Texture. Mm. I like the flavor. I want to see the whole filet personally. So. Like when you get a Caesar salad and they just have Ugh. one yeah. little oh, fish on top. I always <laughs> ask when I get a Caesar salad, as often as, 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 it, as that is, I always ask if they have anchovies in the dressing. Yes. Mm. And that's how you know it's for real. Mm. Right. And that's the way I like them. The flavor, not the carcass. The actual fish. Not the, <laughs> right. Hey, my Orange daughter is. is a vegetarian, so we have to ask that too. Oh, okay. Is there, are there anchovies? Oh, for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Then, then we don't get it for the table. And mm. It's just like, come on. <laughs> get in there, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> You're not camera ready? No. no. All right. All right, crazy questions. We're eating right around the corner from Donut Crazy, Farmington Avenue, Irene, episode 10, big time sponsor. We got some crazy questions. But before we get into crazy questions, what minute are we for crazy questions? We got to know. Do, 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 do. We're at. Did you introduce the new guest on? Marsha? Yeah. Marsha's been on before. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Marsha's got another job after, too. The new voice of the intro. I'm very oh, wow. excited about that. <laughs> Maybe like you want to give it a practice on the air. But we'll ask your questions first. What is your favorite article of clothing? Wow. What do you want to ask? Hmm. Uh, honestly, I... I'm not a big fan of clothes, you know. Um, it's there this. we have it, ladies. Yeah, my rise up hoodie. My rise up. <laughs> I can yeah, tell yeah. you that. <laughs> this is probably either the rise up hoodie or my rise up polo, kind of like Steve Jobs, always in the black outfit. It's either this or the rise up hoodie. You're gonna no, see me around the last town. Last three in. times I've seen you, you have had the hoodie <laughs> yeah. on. It. I want a hoodie. And there's a, that's on the website. On the website, you can buy any pretty much article of clothing you want on there. Hoodies, hats, purses, a whole bunch of bags. Yeah. Of I'm stuff. sure there's plenty of people Bathing in the suits. area that see him and say, oh, there's that poor homeless guy in that sweatshirt again. <laughs> because, you know, he I usually have a, I think there's a stain on here. A couple. My wife keeps right. telling me to get a new sweatshirt. Yeah. So. I think you might have access. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good news, I didn't stain my shirt, He's very I frugal. got my pants. Oh, that's right. okay. Mm. You don't need that you for did. tomorrow. That's you right. Did. Right by my desk, I got the no stain No pants stick. Tuesday. Mm. You can't eat without right. wearing mm -hmm. it. Stain oh, stick. Oh, stain boy. Stick. Gotta have the stain stick. But the shirt's still good to go. I'm wearing it tomorrow. World Down Syndrome Day. What about you? And I have my, you know, on the back of my chair at home is the black zip-up sweater that is always the thing I put on when I, mm. yeah, when I get chilly. So my favorite sweater's hanging in the back of my chair, my work chair. I like hoodies. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have a favorite hoodie, but that get home from school, take off the formal gear, throw on the hoodie to mm -hmm. relax hoodie. Comfy cozy. Yeah, there's like 10 of them, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's no job. better feeling like taking jeans or dress pants off and putting on sweatpants. Oh. That's. Your day is done, you're like. Oh, I feel ah, so good. Let out the <laughs> so I know it. Yeah, yeah. we work at home, people are like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, business on the they're top, like, sweatpants on the bottom. Normal day. pants. Right. What are Jeans. pants? What are these pants of which you speak? Mm. So. You both have kids? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who would you introduce your kids to? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. If you had the chance. Anybody. I had to come up with a real answer. Mm. Not fall back on your family. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Hmm. That's a tough one. Uh, I guess this, is, this could be a cliche one too, but Jesus, it would be great to introduce yeah. my daughter mm -hmm. to Jesus. Hmm. I think she could learn a lot from him. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Ask get a little what light. You do. Yeah, exactly. Good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. question for you. Yeah. Just one w quick W J D. You know, he's got all the answers, so. Mm -hmm. So you're, oh. in a, you're, in, you're at a playground or you're, and you're walking with the perfect person to meet these kids. Who would you want them to meet? Well, I was just <laughs> <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> no, I, no, I, Jesus is good. I, I was thinking, oh, and this was a rise of time. Jesus this is, is good. good. He's good. He's, Jesus He's is always right. a good That's person to meet. You know, we, we, uh, we've had some conversations. But, um, yeah, I was saying Martin Luther King, right? Mm -hmm. Because why that came to mind is because of Rise Up and, you know, all the MLK um, murals. Yeah. Um, that Rise Up is done. So I thought, oh, that would be a great okay. match as well. And he spoke a lot about Jesus, too. He spoke so. a lot about Jesus. He was <laughs> incredibly well-spoken, <laughs> intelligent individual, right? So, absolutely. Can't All go right. wrong there. All right, so there's a sale that you've gone to. Like, you saw something on sale, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I hope they don't correct the price on this because mm. this is a steal. What was it? Oh, my gosh. Go ahead. <sighs> I just lost out on this. This this was actually a new bed for my daughter. Wayfair sold out of it, oh, and it was like crushed. this supreme. And her birthday is April first, so like now I need to figure out Pivot. this very quickly. But it's this really cool bed, and it was uh, like originally like nine ninety nine or something on sale for five hundred and eighty four bucks. And it was two beds, like a little like house top on it. It was like everything a three year old would just love. And I'm or really a fifty six year old. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm really motivated, so it gets her out of our bedroom and into her own bedroom, um, which is why I was really excited for this sale. But uh, I either gotta suck it up and pay more now or pivot and buy a new bed. All right, this is one of the stupid stories I love to tell, so I love you to ask the question. This is why we asked the question. I walk into Nordstrom, and there's this hat on a mannequin, and I pick it up, like, I couldn't find it anywhere, right? It says $12 on it, whatever. It's a Roan hat, so I'm like, wow. So I go up to the register, she rings it up, and it says, one penny. I'm like, how is that a penny? How do you even, like, I don't even own a penny. Can you charge a penny? She's like, just take it. So I'm like, how did that happen? So she just marked down because it was sitting on top of the mannequin. Nobody bought it. And so then I had it with me in Portugal, and my friend Anne had it on her purse and dropped it. So all I can do for the rest of my life, I said, for the rest of my life, I'm going to talk about how you lost my one penny roan hat from Nordstrom. <laughs> right. That's a deal. That, don't. Can't beat that story. Good story, right? And if you know me, I love to have those little stories where I just say, remember when you did that to me? <laughs> and it's really finger stupid. Finger wag, finger yeah. wag. Yeah. And I have to go to class. So this was really cool that I did not know I was going to be on this podcast. Yeah, well, I'm really excited about it. In. And I'll see you at 430 at Parkville Market next Monday. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No problem. Marsha, this is for you now. Oh, darn it. We can't that. really hear Except either of you guys. Uh, with the middle. Uh, Do I have to like, hold it? You can keep it, yeah. You Somewhere. don't have your headset on, so I can't microphone check a mic a microphone check a. Wow. Nice, so much. nice to meet you. Take care. Did I just write WHPD down here? She's WHFD. Uh -oh. I offended. She's one offended. of the bravest, not the finest. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, I mean, gosh. <laughs> I can be fine and brave. True. But I'm not one of the finest. I am definitely brave. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean. So, fire is brave. Yes. Got it. Yes, that's the way that works. Yep, Deputy Fire Marshal. Your friend's a Feeny now, dude. We're going to get this max capacity Let's up to it. 100. <laughs> <laughs> We're good, bro. Don't worry about it. There's a formula that we follow. <laughs> <laughs> There's a formula. It's the magnet formula. So if you weren't <laughs> in your current job, whatever you're doing now, mm -hmm. all well described at the top, what would you want to do? I'll be honest. I just left my job to do this. Mm -hmm. So this is literally exactly what I want to do. So November 4th, 2022, I shut the doors on corporate America. Mm -hmm. 
and have gone 100 percent into this nonprofit work and serving the community. Full tilt. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. And then we already had Herring and Basquiat. Do you know those two? Basquiat. Basquiat. Yeah. See, didn't know either. Mm. Now I know all about them. Mm. They're two artists from New York City. Uh, Basquiat, I, I may have heard of, but not Herring. That's Alex McDonald. Oh, wait. Isn't Herring the, does he do? Yeah, the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> way I could describe it. All these artists in the bag. Yes, yeah, picture the people are on there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, so we have a, um, we have an acrylic puzzle mm. and it's just clear with black, all the black lines yeah. on it. It's super hard. Yeah. It was a great family thing, mm. but that's, yeah, that's an awesome artist. Yeah. Hmm. Yep, that's from that's the Wolf cool. School art teacher, Mrs. Austin. We, we did the art test and he, he passed. Awesome art. <laughs> awesome Austin. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So if money's not an object, what's your dream car? Uh, a dream car. I would like a uh, Tesla truck. I love trucks mm. because of the practicality of them. I always have stuff in them, but I also don't like gas or any of that. So I would still need something that could get me around, get my stuff around, but I'd like to do it in an economical or eco-friendly mm. way. I was going to do the exact opposite. I want a, a <laughs> diesel Humvee. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be the exact opposite. Yeah. I got an all-black Dodge Ram right now. I'm all-black Dodge Ram. Whoa, was that your all-black Dodge Ram? Hey, he's got one and I got one right there. We own the corners with you know the all-black Dodge Ram. I drove up and I was like, wow, Feeney's got privileges. He got to like roll right up on the side of the VIP, street over there. and like, It's kind of on the sidewalk. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm covered by Rise Up over here. Yep. I was like, wow, that is... I'm just keeping an eye out for the meter guy. Well, that's privileges. If he starts to <clears throat> see a guy on my, near my hood or my windshield, I might have to go, hey, I got to go That's a guy you need to interview. Yeah, get him on my side. The, the guy with the hat, he comes out. Oh, man, he is fierce. He's fierce. All right, a couple more crazy questions. Oh, wait, and where do you buy pizza? Um, so back where I, I live in East Granby, there's Gio's J Pizza. J and G. J and G. Oh wow! <laughs> Silence, crickets. <laughs> All right, back to Gio's. Okay, I guess yeah, yeah, Gio's let's, or the barn. The Gio's is on question. the left, and the barn is on the right side of the house. So Gio's or the barn? Oh, the barn's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that splits you? You're yeah, I'm, I live on Newgate. Oh, right. um, so yeah, I'm like right in the middle of Geo's and uh, the barn. What about the golf course? Do you go there? So Do I don't golf, golf but oh. I've gone to the, the restaurant there and it's uh so okay. how old's your kid? Is she four yet? Uh, she will be three April first. Yay. Yeah. You get her a high metal day camp. Yeah, that'd be great. In the summer, eight yeah. weeks. Hmm. That sounds good. good. You, know, you can just make <laughs> that happen. He said he'll make it. He, yeah, the twins mm -hmm. are gonna come. High nice. metal day camp. Wait. What? How did that just happen? It's Sponsored a by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bus from West Hartford. Oh, right, yeah. Hmm. All right, we got Hop some... right on. You get it hop. No. Hop. Red or blue? Blue. Would you rather have an extra finger or an extra toe? Finger. Would the rather... toes would, like, throw you off balance, okay. maybe. Shoes, man. How would you buy shoes? Yeah. <laughs> would you rather be three feet tall or eight feet tall? Eight. I've been short my whole life, so it'd be nice to <laughs> experience something different. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather be a famous singer or a famous actor? Uh, I'd like to be able to sing. I've always wanted to have a musical talent, but I've never actually had one, so it'd be pretty cool to, to be a singer. What's your favorite song? Um, so back in the day, my friends would say it's Piano Man, because that's what they would hear every time we'd go to a bar and there was karaoke. Um, oh. But, uh... <laughs> Come on, break it out. You know what? Of course I do. Um, but uh, one of the songs that had one of the most, like, transformational things in my life was Keep Your Head to the Sky by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Powerful song. Um, I used to like listen to that every morning in the shower for probably two years straight. Oh wow! Yeah. How's that go? And uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to. She knows. She's good. Essentially, when <clears throat> things go wrong, things aren't going the best, always keep your head to the sky. Simple. Come on, give us the hook. I, I don't. I'm, come you on. got this. Come on. You got this. We'll join in. I know so, you know what song that reminds me of? It reminds me of... Um, then I look at you, doom, 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 and the world is all right with me, doom, 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 doom. I know that song. Just one look at you, doom, 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 uh, and the world is gonna be. I know it. I know it. Do, oh, do. Thank you. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Lovely. Oh yeah. Lovely day. Lovely day. I think it, it just. Hello, uh, uh, <laughs> I'll do that part. Uh, <laughs> That's is that a part? <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather play in the beach or the snow? Beach. I, even though, like, I can't stand sand. So remember that OCD thing? Mm. If there's a little speck of sand in my bed after the beach or something, I freak. I can't, like, all the sheets are coming off. Like, I just can't have sand or crumbs or anything. And I'm fighting crumbs in my bed now because of my two-year-old <laughs> likes to bring crackers in there in the morning, so... Would you rather eat ice cream that tastes like pizza or pizza that tastes like ice cream? <laughs> uh, ice cream that tastes like pizza, I mm. think. Yeah. Would you rather break an arm or a leg? Uh, arm. Too hot or too cold? Did I already uh, ask that? Uh, too hot. Would you rather live without electricity or indoor plumbing? Hmm. Electricity. Uh, yeah, I can go without indoor plumbing, so I prefer electricity, I guess. <laughs> the privilege of men. Yep. <laughs> the privilege of men. Everywhere uh, is yeah, a bathroom. It is. <laughs> Would you rather, or, so red or blue, Tupac or Biggie? Uh, Biggie, because we just had a really awesome mural done of him at our last off-main experience. It was epic. Tell me more, where and when. Uh, so this was down, it actually got raffled off afterwards. Part of our event, we had six artists live painting, and then people could vote for the painter, and then the money went to the, uh, the Lower Fairfield County Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. um, and an artist, Patrick Canino, who's really well known um, nationally, he, he's like Chevy Chase's personal painter. Like they play poker and then he just paints Chevy Chase like while they're <laughs> playing and hanging out. Really weird, uh, but that's, that's what artists do, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he killed it uh, doing this Biggie Smalls uh, mural in- Sweater, crown? Uh, yeah, it was the one with the crown. It was, I can't, no, it wasn't the one with the crown. Yeah, it was crown. It was like that classic Crooked you know, crown. crown image. Um, and he painted it in like four hours. It was insane. I'll send it to you so what you guys size? can pull it up. Where, where uh, it was eight by eight, eight foot by eight foot. Wow. Um, That's crazy. Like yeah, it. and it literally looked like a photograph was just put on the canvas. Every That's year in October, I, and the biggie comes around, I, tell, I start singing biggie, biggie, biggie. <laughs> biggie. Yeah. I like it. I think my kids mm -hmm. now associate Biggie Smalls with the Big E. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised there hasn't been any, and maybe there have, I just like haven't seen them, but like there's been a lot of Biggie movies that have come out, I feel like in the past 10 years, like different docu picks, but there hasn't been anything on Tupac yet. Oh, he's, there's one about his mom coming out on Hulu. So there is one coming out. Coming out. Okay. Just but about saw his mom though, not about him. It's like what his mom raised him. Oh, what's her name? It starts with an A. Uh, yeah, she was like a Black Panther. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Tupac. And March 9th, Biggie passed away. The greatest rapper of all time died on March 9th. <laughs> the greatest rapper of all time? Yep. You heard it here first. This is an exclusive <laughs> Feeny Talks with Friends. Well, just in case you were wondering who my dinner guests would be. Queen Latifah is on that list. Her birthday was? 
yesterday? Yeah, I was going to text you. It was yesterday. <laughs> I screenshotted yeah. it. I swear, I'll, <laughs> I showed you. I, was, I screenshotted it. I should have sent it. And how about this? She's the first hip hop artist to get a, a, a star on the Walk of Fame. Huh. That's cool. Well, she's so, an actress, too. Well, she's, she's everywhere. She's yeah. amazing. She's an actress. She's a singer. She's a rapper. Does it all. She's. All right, that was crazy questions. <laughs> crazy questions? Do you have any questions for me? Ah, uh, what, what made you grow out this crazy beard? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I guess it's had to be asked because it looks kind of crazy. I go from Christmas to St. Paddy's Day. Okay. This year I started Thanksgiving to St. Paddy's Day. St. Paddy's Day is over. But I'm um, in the JCC Over 30 Men's Basketball League Championship on Wednesday, so I feel meaner with the beard. Mm. And it's like the playoff beard. It's good luck. It's my mojo. Mm. If I cut it off, I already miss enough layups. I feel a beardless Feeney would miss all the layups. <laughs> or will it make you so sleek? Or aerodynamic? Yeah, like nothing's holding you back. Swimmers grow out their hair and their legs and everything, and then no, before they the big event, no, they don't. They shave they just it all. Sha they just shave it all. No, no, only no. until race day. No, come on. Because again, really? same thing. When you're practicing with hair, you have drag, but then you shave it all off: arms, armpits. Eye some do eyebrows and everything. That's too much. Um, you get aerodynamic. You just whew, do the water like eyebrows. You know what they say: the gray in beards are. <clears throat> Wisdom. Yes. Ooh, I'm brilliant then because this is. You know what I look like is my dog. He's he has a beard and a. You do. You do. Yeah, you, you know when you see those pictures of He's like their Bowser. owner and yeah, yeah. it's like. It's Can you do Bowser. a side by side when this airs? Oh yeah. <laughs> I have a perfect air. Bowser of Barkley and Feeney together with our gray beards. We'll send you the pic. That's awesome. Bowser pic. Yeah, you start to morph into your owner, mm. or he's. He no, has a, no, I don't. I don't think it's that way. I morph, morph into him, <laughs> or is it just coincidence? I think not. No. <laughs> I actually won a, a dog owner lookalike competition. Um, Suffield on the green. We had a bulldog. Um, <laughs> bulldogs have flat faces like us, so like, we won. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Yeah, what do you say to that? <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. We have a winner here. Yeah. I'm all for winning. So. Now do you have any recommendations for? I'm recommending podcasts, movies, books. Um, Swindled. Do you ever guys listen to Swindled podcast? No. Oh, it's uh, great. Uh, I don't. No, I don't do podcasts often. Um, let me look at the. I did read a really great book recently. Let me just get the exact name of it for you. I like to recommend Luna's Pizza. Luna's Pizza is great. Nine nine nine, Farmington Avenue. Oh, so the the book I'm, I actually stopped reading it a little bit because it was it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. But it's got some good tidbits if you you're looking for for something. But the art of not giving an F. Oh yes, hmm. um, that's I've heard that's a great book. Yeah, a lot of. I'm into like kind of like a the stoic philosophy now, like researching, learning more about that, and it's a very like stoic book. I was told so. If you're into that, um, yeah, not give enough. Like when times are tough, to not give enough or not to give enough, like all the time. If you can't control it, why should you worry about it? Right? Like you should stress about the things you can control in your life essentially is what it's about so not not necessarily like don't care about your kids don't care about your family but yeah, can, the but things that are out of stress control. and out of your control yeah anti-anxiety i like it i like yeah. it do you have a recommendation i do not have a recommendation probably more i have like a ton of questions in my head but fire away fire away friends of marsha fire away mm. oh. <laughs> no, we ripped it last. Song? I know that. Is oh, that a, uh, 
um, Coach John Wooden's book was also oh, great. My dad uh, gave uh, all okay. of us, I have four siblings, gave us all that for Christmas, mm -hmm. and it's probably like the fastest book I read. I got it and it was like done quickly. It was really easy read, really great read, especially if you're in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a great book. I love the picture of him and Kareem, right? Is it Kareem? When Kareem was a player for him, and then mm -hmm. like 50 years later, how they just changed. Mm. I have a picture of Mrs. Jarrell, my teacher, when I was in fifth grade, standing next to her, and then when she was the principal that hired me. <laughs> I was a teacher, and she was the principal. I think Kareem was always taller than... Yeah, they John didn't Wooden. switch there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. John Wooden just... <laughs> so close. That was really good. That's that a good enough. try. Well, you know, the, the essence, the spirit of those two pictures yes. are... Yeah. That's what, Similar. that's what counts. I think it was the spirit of it. I don't think it was the image itself, but... Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, another game. It's called Run Your Pockets. What's in your pockets or what's on your feet? What do you want to share? I just have my wallet in my pocket, and uh, I just got these great New Balance. Ever, ever since I became a dad, Ooh. I haven't bought in another brand other than New Balance. got to get the dad shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Those are definitely dad shoes. Yeah. yeah. And I have the classic white pair, too, that I use for yard work, you know? Yeah, I have one of those. <laughs> a white pair for yard work. Who does that? That's okay. Broke off. I was wearing the dad shoes. That was a recommendation. There's a dad shoes Twitter page. Mm. And it's all about <laughs> grilling, <laughs> mowing your lawn. In white shoes. Cargo shorts, yeah. high white socks, being a dad. Yeah. High black socks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. That's I actually only wear black socks because white socks, yeah, see, black socks, because uh, white socks get dirty <laughs> really easy. And, and your white shoes? Well, I don't, those aren't wear in public type of shoes. These are very okay. specific They're shoes like... built for a dad to do yard work. Okay. And right. that's what they were given to me as a Christmas present. And I get a new pair every year because I do yard work in them. So there you have it. They, yeah. They it's funny you made that commitment because I made a very similar commitment, but in a different kind of way. I decided I am never going to tie shoes again. Oh, wow. My own shoes. So I actually, if you take a look, I have Ooh. boa closures on this. Unbelievable. So do you, you, you ski? Do you ski yeah, or snowboard? Ski, yeah. So you might, you might, don't look at my ashy legs. Um, Hold them up to like, the camera. Nope. So wow. tighten. And then pop, and you can loosen them up. Yeah. Those are serious. Made your life a lot easier? Yes. Yeah. Sure does. <laughs> until it's my kids crank it all done, the way. Right? Until my kids crank it all the way, and then I'm like, ah. <laughs> but um, Velcro, not afraid of the Velcro. Huh. Nope, not at all. Any kind of a slide, slip on, yeah. I'm all about it. Um, probably also because I have, you know, bad knees, so reduces the amount of kneeling down I have to do to tie my shoes. So Nike I, made I, one where you could like slip, they, they fold up. I have you tried those yet? I haven't. No, those are nice. They're, I don't know. What's the price point on those? Um, I think it well, might they, like be They were doing the, the whole aftermarket stock X thing. People kept buying them up to resell them, mm. taking away from people that had the disability that needed them. Mm. So Nike changed it. We're like, listen, we're not, you can't buy. I don't know how they fixed it, but they made more. But they like almost break in half or yeah, fold up, and then that. you could just slam your foot in, and it just yeah. ties. They're perfect. They're wow. awesome. I think Skechers has a version of that. They were, and then is it Kizits, Kizits, or something like this where you, and the pop, the back pops up for you. Hmm. But it's like I haven't a ski ski boot. Like I haven't ventured into that just yet. But lots of other great footwear out there. That accommodates. Yeah. So. Crocs are, are big now. Nope. <laughs> but no no I laces. Don't I don't I don't have Crocs. But oh, speaking of this may tie in Crocs and painting. People were teenagers and the center mm -hmm. just the other day on Friends and Family on Facebook. Did mm -hmm. you see this? They were spray painting Crocs. People saw teenagers spray painting Crocs, and then there was a someone was here spray paid spray painted over by Santo. El Santo, so mm -hmm. they're thinking there's a connection. Huh. So being a mural guy, just mentioning Crocs, being in the center, <coughs> where were you a couple weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But what's your take on that? Um, 
Number one, spray painted Crocs. Would you wear those? Yeah, I feel like you know any be cool. I guess uh, I really only wear my Crocs to take my dogs out. But uh, and that you were into murals. How do you yeah. feel of like not are they illegal murals or are you a, a fan of all street artwork or does it have to be issued and arranged S legally? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm all about like respect especially like respecting your community too Ooh. so if you're illegally you know defacing a local mom and pop business or local like you know your neighbor not cool you know but there's a lot of abandoned buildings that have some incredible artwork on them that aren't commissioned or like they're legally that yeah. i'm totally down with you know um, and a lot of the artists we work with, they got their start in, you know, the illegal <laughs> fashion and now they're literally world-class artists. So, um, what I see when I see kids tagging a lot of times, it's just a, a kid that needs an outlet, a, a kid that needs some positive influence to do the artwork on a legal way or give them some other community engagement things to do. Did you talk about Veo? Hmm. Oh, yeah, who's that? Not Why is say. that ever? You know him? Do you know who that is? Oh. He doesn't have to say. Wow. Do you know who it is? Nobody has to say anything about anything, but I like your opinion on it. So it, it means C. You know, the VEO, it just H C. H now. Have you seen the VEO? Yeah, you've got a couple different renditions. Yeah. VO <laughs> sometimes. Um, I was thinking that it's just like where he was in his career. Mm. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> The Wait, H is it got, the, the, the three dashes for the E? Yeah, yeah. some people think it's like a, a hobo, like a homeless it, right, person Right, the thing. hobo language, yeah, yeah, a hobo yeah. sign, so it's like the E, the E, O, and now I see this. Together? Yeah, it's all. No, it, 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 he definitely works in a, progr a progression, like. Down 84? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you notice like, oh, he, he just went down and. <laughs> Yeah, and there and some of the the places that he puts it, it's like, how the heck did he yeah. get up there? Like, it's is he trying to be like the Connecticut Banksy or what's going yeah, on? in a way. Like, I mean, it's farther than Connecticut. You'd be up he's in on Maine. The one. And see. He's yeah, he's in Vermont. Yeah, yeah. In is Vermont. he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the green signs that are over the highway. Yeah, like you had to get out there. Like, yeah, or out high on a building. I've yeah, seen. Yeah. Oh, that's the guy. spaghetti warehouse where we're doing the projection up top. It's VO, so that's going to be part of the the whole thing. Um, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Funny that you asked. And he's that. also an extremely talented uh, fine artist too. Well, like how do you he'd know? sit here and do a portrait of you, and so you know. So how do you know? <laughs> Not talent. <laughs> he's got secrets. It's okay. Is he? Taller than six feet or under, shorter than six feet? I've never met him in person, actually. Okay. Interesting. Mm. Fair. What about, oh, you, Biggie's had a mural. What about Corey Payne's Nipsey Hussle mural near the yard? Mm. Game? Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Is it no longer there? No, I'm pretty sure it's still there. Yeah. That was commission legal and all that? That was no? just, well, yeah, that, so that skate park That is, made the Source magazine. Yeah, so that, that skate park is 100% legal mm -hmm. graffiti. Um, so any graffiti artist can go there and paint there legally. So he just decided to go and paint Nipsey Hussle after Nipsey passed away, and it got you know a lot of attention. Picked no, up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But no one like Has asked not. him to go do it or, or anything like that. Him and uh, you know, well, he got like the you know big name on it. There was a couple other local artists too that that helped him out. And he did he do NFL cleats? Yep, big NFL cleat artist. So he got really big when, um, and when he's on his podcast, he can talk about this. Uh, his brother um, tweeted Chad Ochocinco a portrait that Corey just like randomly did one day. And Chad Ochocinco like loved it and then pulled like flew Corey out to meet him or something like that. And then Corey's name just got, you know, sent mm -hmm. around as like this artist. And then Antonio Brown, um, found out and Antonio Brown's been like a big commissioner of Corey's work so that's how he got like the cleats and really became known in the NFL was through his relationship with uh Antonio Brown all through Twitter literally Corey's wow. brother just reached out on Twitter and bingo bango yeah <laughs> that's great yeah. Oprah 
Oprah. That's the Oprah story right there. Corey Payne. Yeah, you just got to try. Reach out. Yeah, you have to ask for what you want. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Javier Colon, I'm going to try. Oh, I, I thought of my reach today. Uh, you want to tell him about that? Nardwar was going to be my reach, too. <laughs> I love this dude. Um, what was today? Oprah? No. My Oprah. Like, um, who would you reach out to? wishfully thinking that they would show up at your at event. an event hmm. hey got a co-host now uh, mark cuban i oh. i like i think mark cuban is one of like the best entrepreneurs out there um he's really at least now like really trying to solve problems with his businesses, you know? Yeah. Um, so he started a pharmaceutical company that limits the amount anyone ever pays on pharmacy. Um, so like those are the types of things he's into as an entrepreneur that I think I would love to just learn from him. I got a question, ready? Yeah. I wish more people knew Okay. Or it could be <laughs> knew how to blank. I wish more people knew how to what? Got it. Um, I wish more people knew the work that went into public art and murals and mm. the amount of like effort and time these artists put in. The amount of times we get like, I just got a request from a, another organization in Hartford that um, wants a two-story mural, and they put budget a thousand dollars, like American it, dollars, like American dollars, or like yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and, and it's like you know these, just like you, you you, this is what these people do for a living a lot of times, right? And you know it's gonna take if someone's gonna take them a week to do a mural, five, you know eight hours a day, like they need to be paid for a week's worth of work. You know, they can't go and just be volunteering on all yeah. of these projects. And wow. unfortunately, everyone just thinks, so oh, an artist will come and, and volunteer and, and do it. But um, if you really want, like, world-class artwork, you got you to gotta pay for it. Um, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Good question. Good answer. <clears throat> what, are, what minute are we on? Hour 45. Oh, hour 45. We're wrapping up. We're getting. We shoot for 40 minutes with Feeney. Ooh. We had all these special guests. We had food. We had a wonderful conversation. Uh, we played crazy questions. We did the art game. We asked your questions. We did recommendations. We did first and first, last, best, worst. Mm -hmm. Talked about my T-shirt rising up for Yara Lee's. We had Luna Pizza. Thank you, Alex. On 9999 Farmington Avenue. Thank you, Kyle and Dave from Direct Line Media. Thank you for our past podcast guests and now Uber Delivery and now co-host, <laughs> Marsha, from the West Hartford Fire Department at WHFD. Yeah, and we're here, Rise Up Group, right, for Rise Up for the Arts, matt.conway at the riseupgroup.org or the riseupgroup.org website. Got it all. Any closing remarks? I really appreciate you guys having me here and uh, coming out and checking out the community exchange, hoping this becomes a nice permanent fixture here in the West Hartford community. Uh, and we hope to uh, increase the capacity in here to uh, get some more community members in. <laughs> what a plug, huh? I like it. Wow. <laughs> we got to get Joey Bats on here, too. Oh, easy. Corey Payne, Joey Batts. Yeah. So Joey Batts is our MC uh, for Art Manifestation May 13th. All right. I'll yeah. meet him then. Yeah. Yeah. And Sophie, Sophie already reached out to me on uh, Instagram to do a digital banner or, or a permanent mural. Sophie. Oh, cool. So cool. And was, I told her, hey, I'm coming on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you to our sponsors, Brooke Law Golf. Brooke Golf Law. Oh, boy. I'll get it right. Keating Agency Insurance. Gastro Park, Weehaw Brewing and Roasting, Donut Crazy, West Hartford Lock, The Fix IV. That was an amazing conversation. I'm really proud to connect with the Rise Up group and we'll be looking out for our events and I will be there. Awesome. On three, we'll say be a good friend. One, two, three. Be, be a, a good, good friend. friend. Woody woo.
Welcome to the Feeney Talks with Friends podcast hosted by Eric Feeney. Eric is a founder and president of Friends of Feeney, Inc., which is a local grassroots, community-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to help children and families who need assistance after heartbreak and tragedy. Eric uses his podcast, Feeney Talks with Friends, to talk to wonderful people in the community who are doing great things because we're doing great things. First of all, we'd like to thank Dave and Kyle from Direct Line Media for making all of this possible. Then we'd like to thank our podcast sponsors, Gastro Park, The Fix IV Therapy, Keating Agency Insurance, Golf Law Group, Donut Crazy, Weha Brewing and Roasting, and West Hartford Lock. Be a good friend and subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and any other streaming service that hosts podcasts. Please check out our website at www.friendsoffeeney.com and learn how to support, volunteer, or become a podcast sponsor. Be a good friend. Pick up trash, hold the door for someone, give a compliment, and be charitable. <laughs>